I coordinated um, Lille and Vance that I'm going to meet with Tony when I come to Lauterbrunnen. He bought this RV with his wife Mary and they've been cruising around all over Europe with it, going from uh, one place to another, meeting a lot of the jumpers and, and actually practicing for the, for the upcoming Grand Prix. That seemed to be high on his um, summer plans is to find a, find a track that would simulate what we have in China and then just continue the jump and jump and jump. Tony is like such a big inspiration for me. He, he constantly keeps proving that there, there is life in the older age, and uh, and it's funny. Like you know, I get, I get he got a nickname Trampa in China when he was there last time. He walked to the exit point. He has this like little like stick, walking stick, and uh, and then he goes there and kicks ass of all the younger kids. And I got to hang out with him a little bit. And we went to the RV and and did some hiking together. And we did this beautiful, beautiful hike after the exit point. Tony is one of those characters. Like I mean, he's here the entire summer, and um, and people know him, so it's always easy to find out where he is. Like you go to a city, is Tony here? No, no, he just left to Frento. Or the Frento? No, he's at the Lauterbrunnen. I sat down with Tony for a little while, and we kind of talk about many things in his practice and how the summer had gone so far. I'm hoping this is going to work. It's a different suit totally. I got the Fusion, it was the rig combined with a suit, and I made a bigger suit called the Jedi, which is probably going to be called the Apache 2, we don't know. Uh, so anyway, uh, it was all gung-ho and I thought the suit was going great. And then last week, Julian, who won it last year and won the Norway race, says he prefers the old suit. So a little bit of a mix-up right now. So I just had my shop send me a new one out, the, the Apache, the old Apache, the oldest of the, of the top suits that started this whole thing. Uh, so I'm going to compare that. In, in Brento, I'll have three suits to try out. We'll do the race, the three turns. and. Um, yeah, uh, I've been working on it since the race last year in China. When I got home, I've worked all winter on the suit, which was a combination of my two best suits. But the interesting was also to sit down with him and, and as a designer of wingsuits, talk about the future, like where we're where we going to go from here, like what's the evolution in flights, how much margin there is in the wingsuits to kind of develop the, the flight and, and how the wingsuits are going to be in, let's say, five or ten years. And all these different athletes have different opinions. So many different things you can do with a wingsuit. Uh, flying with solid wingsuits. <laughs> Maybe small jet engines on us. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on what products and textiles we can get. Some um, gluing materials and not using sewing. There might even be some sort of like nanotechnology built into our suits that are going to like have when you first jump off the suit just instantly like solid, which is going to make it fly really well, like more like an airplane than anything else. Plain wings to make them more, more, fuel, more fuel efficient have the upturned wingtip. So that's a complete, you know, why don't we do that on a wingsuit and immediately we'll have less drag and more speed. Improve the inlets, I'm still not that wrapped on the inlets. Where the air goes in to inflate the thing is that you need the air inflation to, to hold that much wing. You could never hold it with your arms, you're not strong enough. So the inflation has to inflate. Maybe in five or ten years we're going to be able to have wingsuits that glide as well as paragliders, like maybe ten to one and quite possibly better. The um, company are, are on, on to make a better wingsuit and, and eventually people are going to land the wingsuit without opening the parachute. And landing without a parachute. That's going to be the future, I think. All I know is that it's going to keep changing every day. Every time someone goes to the design board, they're going to keep improving the product. And it's just always going to keep changing. Different fabrics, different designs, different aerofoils. Um, well, even while I'm here, I'm drawing aerofoils and sending them to the shop. And they make, they're making me suits right now as we speak. And they send them out and I go jump them. Tony, I mean, he's a he's a legend in the sport, and he's been doing it for so long. I constantly keep learning learning stuff from him. I mean, he's 60 this year, and he's still jumping. Like I think I'm I'm 38 now, and I think his life is over. <laughs> like I can't live any active life. And then there's a guy who's like over 20 years older than me. He's still jumping off mountains, and you know, it's such a great inspiration. And I could see also that kind of like love and admiration also from uh, from Mary's eyes. Like I mean, he is the like you know Tony is a real life superhero. You know, you see these Batmans and Supermans that are like flying across the sky, but the wingsuiters are real. They're not doing it for the money, they're not doing it for the fame, they, they, they're doing it for the passion of the flight. I think that pure motivation is the fact that truly makes them the, the real-life superheroes.
after after Tony Champ and me, me and Mary, we, we just did an amazing hike on a cliff face and had a wonderful, wonderful experience. There was a little window for me to the life of the whole bunch of big athletes and, uh, and it's, it's, it's very, you know, I don't, I, I can never get to use, overuse the word inspiring, but that's, that's the word that just seems to come up when, when dealing with a lot of these things with pilots.